Phishing attacks have evolved. It's no longer just a sketchy email with really bad grammar and fake logos. It's now structured, dynamic, and in some cases, almost perfect. Anyone's latest threat intelligence report highlights a growing wave of phishing campaigns imitating Microsoft SharePoint in a way that uses domain names that look legitimate, follow consistent patterns, and in some cases, even bypass multi-factor authentication. What's even more interesting is how attackers are abusing legitimate platforms like Album Pro, which is a site that was built for photographers, and using that to host phishing pages that slip right past filters and endpoint defenses. So in this video, we're going to take some of those same indicators straight from the report and pivot into anyone's threat intelligence lookup to see how we can enrich those IOCs, track the domain structures, and uncover the behaviors behind them. This video is going to show you how to move from static threat intelligence indicators and pivot into using them as dynamic behaviors that help you to hunt and detect threats better. But before we get into it, if you're new here, I'm Day, a cybersecurity engineer at Amazon, and I've spent the last few years across detection engineering, threat hunting, cloud security, and threat intelligence, just trying to figure out how to keep things secure without slowing the business down. This video is kindly sponsored by anyone, and today we're gonna to be walking through a live investigation that connects intelligence to action. If you wanna go deeper, join the Cyberworks Academy Discord, which is our community of thousands of learners and professionals, and subscribe to the Cyberworks Unplugged newsletter, where I share stories and lessons from the front lines of cybersecurity. That being said, let's get right into it. All right, so this report highlights a rise in phishing activity involving domains that imitate Microsoft SharePoint through structured naming patterns. And it looks like the abuse of the legitimate hosting platform Album Pro has been observed for hosting phishing content. I want to see what Album Pro is about. Let's look it up. So it looks like this is a platform for photographers and creatives. As you can see, you can upload photos for delivery for your clients. All right, let's go back into the report. So here's a summary. Recent activity shows an increase in domains masquerading as Microsoft SharePoint. These domains follow consistent structural patterns and are generated using persistent techniques. Since June 26, which is 2025, both the number of these domains and the volume of related tasks in which they appear have risen notably. The chart shows the dynamics of such domain appearances from June 26 to July 9th, 2025. So you can see here, this is June 26th, we've seen a slightly increase in searches for, for those domains. So we've got some of the examples of the observed domains, which we can now use to pivot into the lookup. So we can open this in a new tab. Let's grab this first domain and see if we actually have any searches for it. But before we actually even do that, these domains all have a similar sort of naming pattern. We can see there's like this consistent string here appended before my SharePoint dot some random domain dot org. Let's see. Let's search this up uh, by using domain name. And this is where we're actually taking that indicator to actually take a look at what it is. I know this was defang. So let's remove these square braces, close our quotes, and then run this. All right. So we see that we have a result for this domain, IPs for it, and a bunch of matching analysis for it. So we can actually pivot from here and look at what these analysis came back to be. We're not going to do that quite yet, but we already see some of these already match this malicious activity. Let's go back into the report before we dive deeper into the lookup. So it says all listed domains share recurring structure patterns which can be leveraged to track and proactively detect similar malicious activity all use the org top level domain which we see right here the majority of second level names are structured to mimic legitimate resources associated with u.s based organizations such as teho fire which is teho living with fire.com what is what is this for okay this looks like a lake for residents who are interested in wildfire or wild yeah, wildfire it's a collaborative education and outreach program established in 1997 by the University of Nevada Corporative Extension with support from the Toho Fire and Fuels team. Interesting. Let's see what the other ones are about. We've got Fence Corps, Liberas, 155.org, and Capernos.com. We see a little bit of a typo squatting here. And here we see that the portion of the third level domain preceding my SharePoint consists of a 29 character string that follows a consistent structure. It's the same string here in the middle. So we see the same string here in the middle, then 365, 835, or 385. And then the same string again, then 39, or some other number, 39, 63, 68, and then another string. So in these third level components, only the numeric characters vary in certain positions, while the rest of the string remains constant. The dash my SharePoint segment is fixed 
is a fixed part of the third level domain and appears consistently across all observed samples. All right, so this is the first part of actually kind of understanding what's going on here. If you're a detection engineer or like a threat researcher or even a threat hunter, this is the portion where you're kind of just still looking over the report to understand what it's doing before you start building out your detections. And from here, we've already seen some patterns, right? We've seen a pattern for using some random string, a, a 29 character string, dash my share point, dot some legitimate us service dot org that's already a pattern we're seeing there and so now with this we can then use this to to pivot into further threat intelligence investigation uh within anyone's platform for threat intelligence lookup but beyond this if you're like a threat hunter at your company right you can start to or your threat detection you can start to think of like detection hypothesis or hunt hunt hypothesis you can pivot off of from here but before you do that you want to understand what are the behaviors we're seeing from this domain? Because we don't want to just like make very atomic searches for your detection or your hunts. You want to actually understand the behavior and understand how these atomic IOCs relate to those behaviors. So let's go right back into the report and see how we can use this to then hunt for this particular domain. All right, so a threat intelligence lookup query can be created to search strictly by using this fixed pattern. So with a little bit of regex here, we can use this to search up that pattern. Let's grab it and search it up. So remember, previously, we only just simply searched this one domain, right? But now what we can do is we can say domain name, and we can paste it. So we can see that we're using this sort of regex pattern to say whatever is in front of this string, and then anything some wildcard before the string wildcard before the string and then wildcard org keeping the my share point as the main focal point here in this first portion of the string let's run this all right so now we get seven domains back right so we can see other domains that follow the same pattern more ip addresses and now more matching analysis for this it is also possible to simplify the query to cover cases when the portion preceding my share point dot org varies while preserving the overall structure so essentially right? This was a way we used for this particular tactic where we're seeing this random string. But if we wanted to even broaden the search even more, we can actually just look at this particular pattern here, which is wildcard dash my SharePoint dot star dot org. We can run this and we'll probably see more for these. Okay, it looks like this, these are the only details we have back, it's, which is essentially the same thing as what we had before. But if there are other sort of threat actors or threat actor infrastructure that was following this pattern, we'll be able to see that because we're kind of expanding the search a little bit further here. Now, this is where the analysis portion starts to become, right? What we did initially was just gathering intelligence, right? We're just gathering intelligence, trying to understand what's going on here. What are the indicators? We now have to move those indicators to understand the behavior. So we're moving from static indicators to dynamic behaviors that we can then use to understand what essentially is this particular indicator playing as a role within the overall attacker's life cycle. And this is where we can then pivot into anyone's sandbox to understand that. I think this is what really differentiates this sort of intelligence platform from general other general intelligence platforms that just kind of give you a dump of like IOCs. We can pivot from here into an analysis to better understand. Let's actually do that and see what happens. So going back in here, we can just go for the first one, which actually has this particular domain right here. Let's click into it. And this will lead us to a sandbox analysis or a task here in any run. And here we get to see the full run of what happened when they went to this domain. So we see that this is for the Toho, tohofire.org. So let's go ahead and see what happened here. And we see that they, when they went in here, it looks like it says the site can be reached. Let's see what happened next. And that was it, according to at least here. But what it, what happened? What else happened? Let's stretch this out a bit more and see what process tree here looks like. So it looks like they went through Chrome and this is where some weird malicious stuff starts to happen. If we click into this, what is happening in here? So it looks like this was detected as malicious and specifically because phishing was detected by Suricata. If we click into that, this just gives us the Chrome extension, but this is highly likely due to that particular domain that Suricata detected as part of that analysis. Let's take a look at the graph to see it maybe in a better visual manner. All right, so it looks like we have Chrome, which is where they ran that URL. And then we got Chrome.exe, which is where the malicious activity was first deemed. Let's look at another analysis that might give us a, a different result. Let's look at this one that has the allboompro.com hosting. I'm actually interested to see how 
this relates back to that share point. So here we see that we start from here, when we get here, this is where they're opening this particular file. Well, actually this particular domain, which is the album, albumpro.com. And in here we can see this very lureful phishing document in here for some PDF. If we go to the next, decided to probably maybe clicked it and downloaded it. So let's see what's happening here in the processes. So we have MS Edge going to this particular domain here for Album Pro, Delta Steel Inc. Workspace. And here's where we, we get some fishing. This is probably where they put in the, the domain for this Album Pro. Let's see what else happened here. All of these just appear to be MS Edge. And then we have Updater here. And then nothing else happens. So it seems like these are just being run and scanned. The files are not actually being executed for whatever reason. Let's look at the graph. It's kind of the same thing that we have here. Let's see if we can look at another report. Let's look at this Hennyman one. Okay, so this one is a bit different. This one actually starts from this hennymandaalbumpro.com and they actually get to here where they click the document, looks like it. And then it leads them to the malicious SharePoint page. From there, it's verifying them. It's, you know, obviously trying to look as real as possible. And then this is where you get the credential harvesting. Let's see if they put in any credentials, get some passwords and all that stuff. So it's probably just doing some credential harvesting here. And that's about it. Let's see if it dropped anything. Seems like it just might be credential harvesting in this case, because we already have seen this previously. Let's see if there's anything else. So it's not dropping anything on the host. It doesn't seem like it simply seems like it's just doing credential harvesting or probably just trying to gain access to um, some SharePoint accounts. So this is more of like a general phishing sort of attack. Nothing much crazier than that. But obviously this could lead to so much more with the right motivation from the right attacker. All right, so this was a straightforward investigation that allowed us to pivot through anyone's threat intelligence lookup and expand that into a full behavioral picture, tracking domain patterns, sandbox activity, and even the infrastructure used in these phishing campaigns. This is helpful because once you understand how an attacker operates, you can build detections that actually matter and focus your threat hunts on actual threats. So if you wanna see how I use this same techniques to investigate one of China's biggest hacking groups, check out this video on the screen where I go into more details. I'll see you over there.